Welcome to Log Furniture How To, the most all inclusive site on the net for log and rustic furniture, fixtures, and decor. That's logfurniturehowto.com. Oh, hey there, how are you doing? Welcome back. You got me out here working on a little secret project. Yeah, I'm cutting this rotten end off of this 10 by 12 rough sawn cedar beam that I had left over from an old construction job. Over the years, I've saved lots of this stuff. Because you just never know when you're going to be able to do something cool with it. So while we're out here cutting wood today, I thought it'd be a great time to talk about the circular saw. Maybe do a comparison with a worm drive and a sidewinder. Now when it comes to cutting dimensional lumber out in the field, say framing houses or something like that, the circular saw is going to become one of your best friends. And over the years, believe me, I've put in plenty of hours with either one of these in my hand. So let's take a minute right now to compare the difference in these two saws. And then maybe we'll even make some sawdust. Now the first thing you probably notice is how the blades are set up on opposite sides. With the worm drive, the blade's on the left hand side, which makes it real easy for right handers to see the line when you're cutting. On the sidewinder, the blade's set up away from you if you're right-handed. But there's really a whole lot more to it than just that. The terms worm drive and sidewinder actually refer to how the motor spins the blade. Here, I'll show you. Let's say this is your saw blade. On a sidewinder, you've got the motor set up at a 90 degree angle to your saw blade. On a worm drive, your electric motor it's pointed this direction with an actual worm drive gear and a shaft output there. Very similar to an angle grinder. The motor's going this way with a shaft turning the disc this way. And this laminate trimmer represents the setup on a sidewinder with the motor going this way and the shaft straight out. Now both of these saws represent an ideal means to cut dimensional lumber. They're lightweight, portable, and easy to use. Enough of this talk already. Let's grab one of these saws and cut some. Here you can see a grid system I've come up with for the bed of my trailer. I use this when I transport our rock and log furniture, keep it from moving around. And I've used this saw, uh, this Trex 2x2. It's synthetic lumber and you can see that it snaps off pretty easily. So I'm going to replace this today with some old uh, two by two redwood that I've had left over. Let's go ahead and make some cuts. So here you can see exactly how we've set these up to interlock. It's pretty simple really. You're just taking an inch and a half by three quarters out of each one wherever they overlap. Now I've already taken time to mark out our boards and what we're going to cut. So let's start with this sidewinder. Now the sidewinder is a good all around saw. It's a lot lighter than your warm drive and costs, oh, 50 or 60 bucks less. Let's start with these cross cuts. Now with the sidewinder as a right-hander, you can clearly see how I'm having to tip over to see my line. Now let's take a minute to adjust the cutting depth of this saw so that we take out our dados. We're gonna cut three quarters of an inch out of these. And that's pretty simple really. You've got a little lever over here that allows you to loosen this and raise this up to adjust how deep you cut. And there is a little guide right here, but I don't really trust this. I always like to check it with my tape measure. So here you can see I've marked out our three quarters of an inch. We'll take the saw and line it up so that the blade just catches the edge of that. Of course, we can always do a test cut to make sure that we're dead on. Yep, looks like we're there. So let's go ahead and cut this thing out. Take a big sharp chisel and my hammer. Clean 
this thing out. Nothing to it. One more time. So we've got both of these cut, and on this new layout, I'm going to use a full 2x4 for the middle. And then we're going to put 2x2 and a 2x2. So let's rip this other 2x4 in half. And to make this rip cut, we'll switch saws. We'll use that warm drive. Now the warm drive is a much heavier saw. It's a lot more heavy duty. It's really designed uh, for framers. And believe me, I got thousands of hours with one of these. This saw works much the same way. You've got an adjustment right here for your depth and up here for your bevel. You know, and I didn't show you that on the other saw, but the Sidewinder does this too. Now, I didn't show you earlier on this saw, but, but the Sidewinder has an adjustment for bevel cuts as well. Now, as we get ready to make this rip cut, let me point out one more thing about this worm drive. We've already talked about how the blade's on the left-hand side, so it's much easier to see. But you've also got the ability to use this guard or this fence as a guide when you make your rip cut. Okay, so we're going to want to cut this 2 by 4 in half. It's 3 and a half inches wide. That means 1 and 3 quarters for center. We'll go ahead and mark the center point, And that's really about all you need to do. Next, you can just use this finch as your guide. It's an, actually an inch and a half from the edge of this to your blade. So we know that we need one and three quarters. So we're just going to use our finger and go right along the edge, just like that. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. That's about all there is to it. Alright, next we'll just cut the, uh, the last three that go across this way. Now one quick side note about these two saws. This is a good little handy saw. It does a lot of work. But this saw here is a lot more heavy duty. It's got a bigger motor and an actual transfer case where the worm drive comes through. So you're able to do a lot more with this saw a lot longer. In fact, they make some pretty cool attachments for the worm drive. This is what's called a prosy attachment. And as you can see, it's nothing more than a chainsaw bar with a chainsaw this chain. attachment gives you the ability to cut thick beams and structural insulated paneling. All right, enough of the show and tell. Let's get back to work. Next time you go to looking at getting yourself a new circular saw, and if you want to learn more tips and tricks about your tools, be sure to click subscribe right here, and come on over and see me, Mitchell Dillman, at logfurniturehowto.com. We'll see you again next week.